Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. This was actually a really challenging video to make. This is a follow-up on Lost PLA casting. I was making these Doge coins, you know, just for fun. I wanted an object that had some detail in it and the text was very challenging to get it to come out right. So in that video, if you haven't seen it already, you might want to go back and watch it. I'll leave a link. I tried several different methods that just continued to fail. Uh, and you guys gave me some really good comments as far as suggestions on what to try. And I really appreciate people that uh, that made those comments. That's what this video is about. I'm going on and I'm trying some of those things. One of the things a lot of people suggested was that I make a mold and fire it, but don't pour metal in it. Just open it up and see how it looks. Uh, and that's a really good idea. So I've done that in this video. I've done several other things trying to modify my techniques to see how the results come out. Had some real interesting surprises, uh, some things that I didn't expect, and I uh, learned a lot. So I think there's a lot of value in this video. Now, why was it so challenging? Because I'm doing all these different experiments, and I kind of did them all together. I did them at once, and I fired them all at once, uh, and poured, uh, well, the ones that needed poured, I poured all of them at once. When I started looking at the footage and trying to put it together into a coherent video, it was very confusing. So what I've done is I've edited the footage down into separate experiments that sort of fit with each other. So if you see things in the background, other things going on, that's why. Uh, and if I just did it as I built it chronologically, it would not be easy to follow at all. So let's get into it. But before we do that, I got one more thing to warn you about. This is not a drill. One thing, I was really surprised that it failed in the previous video when I casted the plaster on the bottom of the coin and then flipped it over and did it on the top because I know there would not be any air bubbles trapped underneath. Um, and that did not work in the previous one. So I am going to do two things here. I'm going to do that method again. I'm going to use a different investment plaster. This is called Citrical. Uh, and then I'm also going to do it again with the Prestige Plaster that I was using. Uh, and rather than casting it, after I do the burnout, I'm going to open it up and we're going to look inside and see what it looks like before the metal's poured. Uh, that'll tell me, is the plaster failing even before I get to the pour stage? Or is the, the act of pouring that heavy metal into the mold causing it to fail? I'm convinced filling the cavity from the bottom, I mean, I know, it's just a fact, that that is a superior way to do it. The metal is moving uh, more steadily, less turbulently, there's no smashing into the mold. Now maybe I should have uh, vacuum chambered this before I poured it. I probably should have, and when I do the main pour, I will do that. I'm scraping this edge off so that it doesn't trap air underneath when I do the main investment pour. And I have to fill it up to here, and that's a lot of investment plaster to buy. This kind of highlights where ceramic shell casting for a larger object like this is going to be superior, because it just uses less material. Your mold is only around the pattern and nothing else, whereas this, I've got to fill up this entire container. And here's the same experiment, but with Prestige Oro. I haven't done the sprue the same way because I'm not actually pouring metal in this one. I'm just going to open up the mold. So it took a little doing, but I've got them all in there. We're ready to fire it up. I'm gonna make these out of bronze, and this is from some of my previous pours. Can be a bit of an art getting as much in as you can. You can't jam it in because if it's under a lot of pressure, once it heats up, it's gonna expand and crack your crucible.
I had high hopes for this Ultra Cal, and you can see it actually, you know, looks like it has potential for picking up good detail. A lot of the text looks good, uh, but I, I've got the same issues that I was having previously. Uh, and then the, the stuff just cracked up. I think either lost wax or lost PLA investment casting is for small parts. Things like jewelry or, or something, you know, two inches or under. Uh, once you get into these big things, I, I think ceramic shell casting is going to be the way to go. And here's the Prestige Oro pattern after firing. Of course, I didn't pour metal in this one. We're going to open it up and take a look inside. The trick is how to get into this mold without messing it up in the process. Look at that. Sorry guys, I had a little camera failure there. Let me let me zoom you in real close so you can see this. So this is the Prestige Oro. The crosshatch pattern of the 3D print is like right on the surface and extremely delicate. And some of it's even like into the text, which I, I don't quite understand why it would have done that. But it doesn't surprise me that I was not getting good text. So I am quite certain that I was having mold failure with this technique. I mean this stuff is so delicate. Just lightly rubbing my finger and it messes up the the mold. This is ultra cowl I've already cast on the on the bottom side. We're gonna fill this up, burn it out, and then we're gonna open up the mold. Let's take a look at this Ultra Cow. I had high hopes for this stuff. I wanted to see how how tough it is after firing. It's still pretty tough. I mean, I'm really having to push on that. Yeah, it's pretty pretty strong. I think it's uh it's tougher than the um than the Prestige but probably more brittle, which is what's led it to crack so much. It, it looks pretty good. You know, if it wasn't for the cracks, um, it's, it's pretty good and pretty tough. I think it would stand up to the molten metal slamming into it. Now this is interesting how this piece that I cast separately stayed separate from the uh, other plaster that I poured around it. I hope you can see the detail that's in that. Maybe this stuff is brittle and it's only for lost wax. Maybe the PLA expands too much and puts too much pressure on the mold. Really amazing level of detail. Uh, and I've heard that dentists use this for casting teeth. There may be some more experimentation with this. I, I like how tough it is and how much detail it seems to be capturing. Just lightly rubbing my finger and it messes up the, the mold. Whereas this Ultra Cal, I mean, I can rub my finger on it quite aggressively and it does very little. So these two are kind of linked together uh, in how I'm testing them. Uh, the main difference is I've got a pressure pot that I'm going to try. In this one I'm going to mix up my investment, vacuum the air out of it, pour it in, and then I'm going to put it in a pressure pot. Now I'm not sure how much pressure to put on it because you know this thing is not a solid thing it's it's actually somewhat flexible you don't want to do solid because then it's much more likely to crack the plaster as you're doing the burnout just sort of pulling this out of thin air I'm gonna do 20 psi and we're gonna see what happens to the mold this one I'm gonna do the exact same thing except I'm gonna vacuum it twice no pressure pot All right, it's several hours later. Fire it up. Now, obviously, all of these cracked. 
uh, the container is 100% necessary. And that leads me to think I've been using these improvised containers and I think that may be causing some of my issue. A real flask for this process. And these do come in bigger sizes, so it doesn't always have to be a tiny thing. But I mean, that, that's got significant wall thickness. It's got significant weight. It's got holes in there to anchor the plaster in place. I think that's gonna be much more stable and keep that plaster in a, in a fixed, rigid position. I think the flask is very important. And these flasks, when they get big, are expensive. So again, you know, if you have a big item, it's gonna take a lot of plaster, a big flask. You're probably better off just doing ceramic shell. This is the mold that I vacuumed twice. We'll be looking at the pressure pot mold next. You know, this D is not right at all. And that doesn't look like it broke. That looks like it was never molded. Uh, there's no there's no area where it like cracked off. And I can tell you that this stuff is super delicate compared to the Ultra Cal. What's going on there when I tap? It just chunks it off. The text actually looks very good. No air bubbles. The dog looks great. But man, it's delicate. I mean, look at this anything. Again, your flask could be very critical because any movement or anything uh, is, is going to crack this and cause pieces of it to fall off. The detail's not bad. It's certainly not as good as the Ultra Cal. This is the one I vacuumed, then put in a pressure pot to cure. And it broke right in half for me right at the mold. And you can see there's a bunch of junk in there. Yeah, a lot of this. Oh, look at that. There's the D. I wonder if that's what happened to the other one too. The detail all just broke off. Text does not look good at all. I can see some of this has broken off, but a lot of this I think just didn't, uh, didn't cast right. Interesting. Air bubble right there. And here I thought putting it under pressure would really help, but apparently it would take a lot more than 20 PSI. My concern with going more than that is that you're going to crush your 3D print. And if you print it solid, you're going to have more trouble when you try to do the burnout. So I'm not sure the pressure pot is really a, um, a viable solution for this. So on this one, we're going to try vertically again. You'll notice I've got the text all on the bottom. So there's no text on the top where it messed up before. Mix up some plaster, vacuum it out. I'm going to pour it in. I'm going to dip this and wet brush it and then leave it like that. I wear a mask when dealing with the powdered investment because it contains silica, which I do not want in my lungs. Fire it up. came out really nice. The text looks uh, really very good. The S, the O had a bubble in it and the P, so apparently I just needed to, to brush that a little better. The back side has a couple things on it that surprise me. There's a defect there that looks like mold failure to me, like a piece of the mold broke off and then intruded into the, into the metal. And then this, I'm not sure what would have caused that because this was upside down in the mold. So so that was like that. Why would that not have filled? And it either didn't fill during the molding process or during the casting process. Overall, this coin is really very nice. In fact, let me show you the, this is the one I did with ceramic shell casting. And you can see this has started to patina a little bit. It's kind of interesting actually. The text is a little more pronounced on this one, but has a few more defects. The thing that this had going for it was filling pressure because this was upside down and the, the sprue was all the way up here. So there was a good six inches of filling pressure, especially on these on the, the, all the way down. And uh, you can actually see the very isn't as good. Uh, the best text on it is, is right here. So definitely learn something there. You want good filling pressure and, and not just a little bit. I am gonna fix this coin up. I'll file it off so that everything looks good. And I'm gonna put this on my Etsy store so y'all be sure to check that out. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Uh, I know I did. Uh, I think this Prestige Oro has its place, but trying to use it the way I've been using it is, is not it. Uh, this UltraCal, I'm interested in doing some more experimentation, but I'll probably wait for a project that, that it suits. And I've definitely become a fan of ceramic shell casting. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.